Good morning and welcome. Welcome to everyone in our building. Uh, by my count, we're expecting, I think, two dozen of you here in person, uh, which is uh, wonderful. Um, and we're all at a good two meter distance from each other and all wearing our masks, which is delightful. And welcome to everyone joining online. This is uh, an exciting day as we continue through Lent. And it's exciting because uh, this is our annual meeting. And so uh, as you were talking in the comments, there's a little bit of background buzz um, as uh, we're up to some exciting times. And so uh, after the Lord's Prayer, uh, we'll proceed into the annual meeting uh, and then we'll close the annual meeting with a blessing and with we'll make a difference. So just so you're not surprised. And um, well, we really hope you choose to stay for the whole service. If you were to uh, duck out for the annual meeting, certainly we would understand, and that transition point will be at the Lord's Prayer, just so you're ready. My name is Mitchell Anderson, lead minister here at St. Paul's United Church, and we're continuing through Lent. We're gathered today in the territory of Treaty 6, in the homeland of the Métis Nation. Today is the International Day for the Elimination of Racism and Racial Discrimination, and the photo we chose today for this part of the service uh, comes from the closing uh, event of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and children were invited to make uh, little hearts, uh, envisioning the future of a reconciled Canada. And one lifts up justice, which speaks today to our core value of seek justice. This comes to us from a new creed. It is part of who we are as St. Paul's, a church that seeks justice. This is our theme today. If you're joining us at home and you have a candle with you, I invite you to light it with us as we light ours here. This candle reminds us that whether we are few or whether we are many, whether we are near or whether we are far, Jesus Christ is always with us. Hey! 
spirit lavished upon us from on high we know that it is your holy spirit that produces justice and peace and safety it is your holy spirit who works in all of us to reconcile us to one another and to you and so we say thank you god god we name to you too that we have not always lived the fullness of your justice in our lives as a church as a world and so for all injustice god for all violence and hatred and division and pain, we offer these to you, our sins, and ask for your forgiveness, your mercy, and your help to start fresh, to be washed clean, that we might go forward confidently and boldly, seeking justice and resisting evil. We know that in Jesus Christ, to fulfill all justice, you came and joined us, and so, in that healing, holy name, we say, Amen. Thank you. 
justice, as we seek justice together. Uh, a reminder that our annual meeting will uh, occur later in the service. Uh, there's a few printed copies of the annual report if you do need one. It's also on our website and has been emailed out. So uh, if you do need a printed copy, uh, please let uh, perhaps Florence or Cecia know and we'll be able to find uh, one for you. Um, and if you can find it online uh, too, that would be great. Uh, and there's one thing I want to really celebrate, and we'll, we'll take time to do this uh, after the annual meeting too as well. Uh, but this will be, having reached six years on the board, uh, Heather Haven's uh, retirement from our board. And uh, there's a number of us here, of course, in the Worship Center. But if you're joining online, and if you might want to offer a word of gratitude and thanksgiving and celebration for uh, Heather's years of leadership with us, uh, I think that would be lovely, and we'll make sure we can share those with them. I remember when I told my partner that I was uh, coming to St. Paul's, and I was meeting with the chair, he asked who it was, and I said, oh, it's Heather, you know Heather. And he just, uh, his eyes uh, went open, and he was excited that I got to work with Heather, and then I said, but it's her last year. Uh, so he told me we should try to extend her term, but... Uh, She's, she's done six years of amazing service and will now be uh, free for other service to the church and other forms of work. And so we're going to celebrate those years of leadership and uh, for the exciting new things that await all of us as a church. Our commitment this year, our word from scripture to guide us comes to us from Joshua. Be brave, be strong, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you will go. And this word is guiding us. It's guiding us for our annual meeting. Uh, on Thursday, I had the chance to share with colleagues from all across the country about the great work we're doing here at St. Paul's and why I am optimistic and upbeat and excited about our future as a church. Uh, and this verse and the spirit at work in all of us through it is part of what has me so optimistic that God is with us and God is continuing to use us to do great things in the world, 
and our annual meeting is a time to celebrate and say thank you and to plan to move forward into the new year and we do so with gratitude for all of your gifts with gratitude for volunteers who welcome and who run tech and who lead us uh, lead our board and who help with music and with gratitude for all of your uh, contributions and donations i want to thank you if you donate through e-transfer uh, sending an email to us if you mail in a check or drop it off in the mailbox there's our agape bowl at the back if you have an envelope and want to leave it there if you're joining us online there's a little button where you can uh, click and say and uh, uh, contribute that way there's lots of ways where we can support the work of saint paul's the work that god has given us and is using us to the glory of god and the transformation of the world and so let us take a moment to pray God, I want to thank you for all of the blessings, the blessings of the beginnings of spring we celebrated yesterday, uh, for the birds that are returning and for the plants that are beginning to grow and for the promise of warm days ahead. I thank you, God, for uh, all of those who are working so hard to vaccinate our population um, and for all those people who've taken time out of their days to get vaccinated so far. We say thank you, God. And we thank you, God, for the blessings uh, you've bestowed upon St. Paul's. We thank you for people who sacrifice hours and hours to you and to your work. We thank you for the gifts offered that support and sustain and enable that work that allow us as a church to really make a difference, to change lives. And we thank you, God, for the ways that you are sharing that with churches all around this country that we might uh, help you to inspire and ignite hope uh, in United Church everywhere, uh, that we all might work together to the glory of your name, in which we pray. Amen. Our seed of learning today is, who should St. Paul's work with for justice? Who should St. Paul's work with for justice? And this work with is an important thing I want to lift up. I believe that mission is best done in partnership with others. And there are some partners we've long had, and there are some partners that perhaps God is giving us in the future. And there's some partners that might be organizations, and there's some partners that might be uh, a little more general. And so we wanted to take a moment to uh, invite you, if you're in the worship center, if you want to raise your hand and, and share, uh, and I'll call on you and repeat back for us all to hear. And if you're joining us online, uh, you can type in a comment. Who should we as a church be working with for justice? Um, and I'll invite you, as you reflect on that, to type in your comments if you're joining online. And if you're joining us here in the Worship Center, to uh, raise your hand. And, and I will call on you uh, when you are ready. Justice is a big word, but it, it's one of our core values, seeking justice. And it's something that we do want to try to do as a church. We heard uh, yesterday, if you had the chance to watch it, Elsie Livingston, a longtime member of St. Paul's, uh, had a conversation with me that we, we shared to our YouTube page, uh, talking just about this, about seeking justice. And she talked about the importance in injustice as going beyond charity and helping people to help themselves, to build capacity and skills to enable others to achieve the things they dream of. So I want to thank Elsie uh, for lifting up her wisdom about justice and sharing that with all of us. If you haven't had a chance to watch that video yet, uh, we've posted it to our Facebook, it's on our church YouTube. You can watch my conversation with Elsie about seeking justice and resisting evil. I wonder if there's any uh, on stage with me or out in the worship center uh, who might have a thought about who should we work with for justice. Go ahead. So I think we we I, I really love that we have we do a land acknowledgement when we come and we recognize the treaties and our um, the indigenous people that have inhabited these lands and have cared for it and that you know we are are now here as guests and you know as as living with them and so I think in light of you know the the calls to action for the TRC all the work that the United Church has been doing, but I really think when we're seeking justice, we have to keep in mind, you know, the Indigenous people mm -hmm. that are overrepresented in our criminal justice system, and, and 
and um, you know and overrepresented in in the needs that they have for some of the social services and so I think lifting up and and justice has to be you know very inclusive of of all you know our our indigenous um, you know friends neighbors and uh, and you know people we love. Thank you, Heather. Importance of working with indigenous communities to seek justice for all of us in Canada. Thank you, Heather. Perhaps we might sing a song as we let this question settle in. Feel free as you're able. It goes like this. team had the chance to have our first meeting uh, last week, I believe it was, and uh, one of our outreach team members suggested every neighborhood in the city has a community association, and so might we reach out and connect with ours, and so we have that on our work plan now to just reach out and say hello to the community association for Sutherland and Forest Row, uh, and see if there's a relationship, a connection, or some form of collaboration that we can work with them. That's one uh, partnership, one way of working with someone for justice. Are there any others that people have ideas about? Oh, there's somebody else. Yes, go ahead. Um, I have an advocacy for children. Children. And we do have the relationship with Southern School, but I think we could do more to reach out to help parents, mm. to be better parents, to provide that justice for children. Elaine lifts up the importance of justice in our partnership with the Sutherland School. And just as for children and their parents, and that what well, we do lots uh, and have done lots with the Sutherland School, imagining as we move forward, how what more can we do? What more is God inviting us to do uh, with the children and families of Sutherland School? Thank you for that. Yes. Mm. Yeah, thinking of the homeless populations in Saskatoon and the organizations that serve them, for example, the Salvation Army and the Coalition for the Homeless, I think is, is what the name is, or something like that, uh, as places where we might, uh, again, work in partnership that we can uh, have a deeper impact when we work with others. And I think of the um, spirit moved in a number of hearts of people in our church to respond to need uh, the Salvation Army uh, on some of the really cold days uh, this winter uh, to help the, the men who uh, find shelter there uh, have some good winter gear. And that's an example where when we work with others, we can have a deeper impact uh, than we work uh, on our own. Doreen shares uh, women in abusive situations at home, and when they do leave, have often a few places of safety to go, and how might we as a church uh, enable people in situations of family violence to uh, escape those and to find uh, safe uh, places for themselves, for their children, for their families, uh, and work in the long run for the eradication of family violence and gendered violence. Thank you so much for that, Doreen. Uh, Elsie, oh, I thought this was going to be about justice because Elsie is, is one of our great justice champions, but she's thanking Heather for your gifts of leadership. And there's been quite a few of those. Uh, and Heather will, will share those in a little bit. Ellen Wilson names EGAT, uh, again, an organization working with children, um, and often um, youth who are experiencing a number of um, social challenges. 
is another partner in, in that spectrum of response uh, to need uh, that we, again, might work with and find ways to support and partner. Thank you for that, Ellen. Mitchell, I think, I think that we need to be open to new and dynamic leaders in, in perhaps uh, some areas of justice that we haven't yet contemplated. I know you mentioned that briefly, and as I've been listening and watching online in real time, even with what Heather uh, just said even moments ago, but even Elaine and, and others, Betty Lynn, you know, these are all great uh, things and, and organizations and ideas. And I think that there's a possibility to empower new and dynamic leadership. Mm -hmm in our community within uh, this within this question, how we should work for justice. So my heart is hopeful that we'll be able to do more and more. Mine too. Our scripture reading today is brought to us by the prophet Isaiah. Today I'm reading from, uh, you can see it's a little beat up um, if you can on screen, Seeing Better Days is Bible. Uh, so this is the, the first Bible I bought myself after I, I first joined the church. So it's been through some stuff. And I'm reading from Isaiah 32. Watch, rulers will reign with integrity and officials will rule with fairness. They will all be like shelters from the wind, places of refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the dry places, like the shade of a high cliff in a parched land. And then uh, the eyes of all will no longer be closed and the ears of all people will hear. The minds of the rash will know and understand, and those who struggle with words will speak fluently and plainly. No more will the villain be called noble, nor will the liar be highly regarded. Now today, villains speak villainy, plotting evil in their hearts. All their exploits are without God. They misrepresent who the Lord is. They steal from the starving and withhold water from the thirsty. And the liars, their evil deeds are legendary. They devise evil plots to deceive the poor and ruin their lives and to deny justice to the needy. But truly noble people form noble designs and they bear themselves nobly. So rise up, rise up complacent ones and hear my words. Self-important children, hear what I have to say. In just over a year, you presumptuous ones, you will be troubled. For the vintage will fail, and there will be no fruit harvest. So tremble, people of ease, and shudder, you complacent ones. Strip yourselves and wrap up in sackcloth. Beat your chests for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine, for the soil of my people, where thorns and briars thrive, for all the happy houses and the festive city, because the palace will be abandoned, the bustling city will be deserted, citadel and watchtower will be ruins forevermore, a delightful place for the wild creatures and a pasture for wild flocks, until the spirit from on high is lavished on us. Then the desert will turn into an orchard, and the orchard will be as abundant as a forest. Justice will make its home in that forest, and integrity will live in this orchard. It is justice that will bring us peace. Justice produces quietness and lasting safety. My people will abide in peaceful places, with safe dwelling places, quiet places for rest. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day, and we ask blessing upon us, upon our work. May these words from the prophet Isaiah stir our hearts, and may your spirit work in us to bring us to new possibilities for justice in our time. Amen. We've read Isaiah probably more than any book uh, in my ministry here. Um, Isaiah is composed in three parts, uh, and the first part that we read from was composed uh, likely at a time when the people were uh, surrounded by uh, foreign countries' armies. They were afraid of what might happen if they were to be conquered. And so in this situation of fear, of impending invasion, uh, God spoke a word of hope. But hope 
You know, it's like in our new creed that Jesus is our judge and our hope. Hope often includes in it words of, of judgment, of assessment, of correction, as God seeks to bring us back in line to God's vision of justice for all people. And so there's some tough words in here about villains and liars and people of ease. It seems like the prophet Isaiah is challenging the people of his time who just sort of sat around and lived off of other people. They would own big tracts of land, and lots of people would work for them. And they wouldn't actually work, but they would just get the, the harvest. But Isaiah says that God is going to punish them by withholding the harvest uh, and turning their big cities into deserted places. But the scriptures always move from that time of judgment to a time of hope. And so the spirit will be lavished on high, lavished upon us. I love that word, lavish. You know, God does, doesn't give us just a little bit of the spirit. God lavishes the spirit on us. And when the spirit is lavished, then we're told the work of the spirit is to bring justice. Justice. And so for all the people who are hurting or afraid, that then they will have quiet places of rest peaceful and safe places to make homes, that the land will be even more abundant, that the desert will become like an orchard, and orchards will become like mighty forests, that the Spirit brings life and a life for all people, not just those at the top, the people of ease of Isaiah's day. And in our time, as we seek justice and resist evil, sometimes, well, we might not be quite as abrupt as Isaiah, Sometimes we are called to resist evil, to name situations of injustice, and to work uh, for the transformation of the world. And so each week we've been looking through a different one of a category, a way of thinking about who we are as the United Church, uh, brought to us by the Reverend Dr. Janet Gear. Uh, Janet has five groups, and each week we've been looking at one uh, that are in our United Churches. The first week we looked at uh, the ecclesials who uh, experience God in the work of the gathered church. Ecclesials always show up for the AGM, uh, so they're, they're good folks you need in your churches. Then we looked at the spirituals, people whose faith is often very uh, personal and intimate, who experience God in nature and in uh, prayer and in contemplation and in spiritual practices. Uh, we talked about um, the missionals, those who experience God at work in the getting things done in the community, in outreach, um, where many people at St. Paul's have, have been inspiring leaders uh, in the missionals. And this week we're looking at our fourth group, the ecumenicals. And ecumenical is a word, uh, comes from Greek, and it means covering the whole world. And so we use ecumenical to talk about things done in partnership with others in partnership often with other Christian churches. The version of the Lord's Prayer we've been using this Lent is the ecumenical version. All of the churches who speak English from all around the world got together and wrote a version of the Lord's Prayer we could all agree on. It's ecumenical, covers the whole world. And so the ecumenicals in the United Church are those who uh, want to work in partnership with others for justice. Uh, if I were to offer, um, I suspect that my predecessor, the Reverend Deb Walker, is an ecumenical, uh, and I would probably name myself uh, as an ecumenical. So you have a habit of picking ministers who are passionate about justice and whatever that says about St. Paul's. That is part of, uh, it is part of who we are. And in the fall when we did a survey, we found that about 30% of St. Paul's people fit into this, this category, this way of thinking about our work of uh, ecumenicals with a passion for justice, for peace, and for reconciliation. And so I just want to celebrate a few of the ways that we have been working on that as a church. Um, and you'll see behind me some images of these uh, from the last number of years will come up. Just kind of celebrate the ways that we have been working for justice and the ways that are coming ahead. So if I could see the first one of those, that'd be great. We uh, are a church with a heart for justice. 
and he'll see these words on a heart on a craft made a number of years ago this really touched me and to me captured a lot of the spirit of st paul's don't break my heart justice for all this is something that's captured the heart of many of us at st paul's a passion for justice and we pursue that justice in partnership with others there is an organization called icm and they work uh, with all the united churches in the city uh, to uh, meet needs in uh, Saskatoon's core neighborhoods where a lot of people experience disadvantage, poverty, and social exclusion. And one way they do that is uh, they give people canvases, like 10 by 10s, and invite people to uh, paint on them. So people from those neighborhoods to share stories, uh, and then they sell those paintings, uh, and half of the money goes to the painter, and half of it supports the work of ICM and many churches, including ours, and here's a picture from St. Paul's of some of those paintings, a work to support ICM and to, uh, is one of our partnerships that works to meet needs in Saskatoon's core neighborhoods. All of us working together, which is part of that ecumenical impulse, wanting to work in partnership for justice. Uh, we also work, of course, with the whole church uh, from coast to coast to coast. And uh, one of those this year, uh, when we couldn't do lots of gatherings or protests or anything like that, was uh, United Churches were invited to light candles. And so here on this worship center, on this altar, I lit a candle. I, made, um, I had the lovely banner, Kindness Matters, um, that Janet Potter made in the background. And we lit candles and shared these and uh, sent letters to our, our government calling for a, a guaranteed livable income that everyone in Canada should have enough uh, money to get by on. Whatever details of that we can, we can discuss, um, but to share this idea, this hope, that we might live in a country free of poverty someday, where all people have our basic needs met. And we did that in partnership with the whole United Church, with United Churches from coast to coast to coast. Um, another partnership is the GO Project. Um, I got my start in ministry. My first job for the church uh, was at the GO Project, uh, which takes, um, does a number of programs, but one of the, the main programs uh, for a number of years has been uh, mission programs in urban contexts where children, youth from all around Canada and sometimes even beyond uh, will come together for 8 to 12 days and will uh, work with mission partners and engage in reflection and prayer um, to grow in faith and a faith that works in mission. And St. Paul's has supported and welcomed and uh, celebrated the work of the GO Project uh, in, in its previous times here in Saskatoon. And certainly GO is close to my heart uh, and someone who I might invite us to think about working again in the future. But we don't just work with church groups, but we also work with other groups uh, throughout the city. Here we have uh, Cheryl Wilkin and the Reverend Deb Walker uh, at the Rock Your Roots for Reconciliation walk a couple years ago. I think I was there but walking with a different group um, on uh, National Indigenous Peoples Day. And as Heather lifted up uh, the importance of reconciliation to who we are as the United Church and working in partnership with, with others, it's often been United Churches who've uh, offered real leadership. And again, I want to celebrate uh, Deb's work here, also that of her partner, the Reverend Dave Moores, uh, who in their time here in leading United Churches were real champions for reconciliation. And that is part of our work too as a church. We are committed to justice, to seeking justice and resisting evil. It's part of who we are as a church. Now, we don't always get it right. Sometimes we make mistakes. And sometimes along the way, these can be the, the tensest conversations uh, in a church about issues of justice, because sometimes we have differences of opinion. And sometimes language of justice is used to try to silence debate. So you either have to agree with me or not. It's about justice. But I hope that we can have open and kind and gentle hearts in our conversations about justice that we can hear disagreement or difference of opinion as a gift from the Holy Spirit to help us pray and discern, not as a challenge to be overcome. That justice is about wholeness and healing and right relationship. That justice is supposed to be fun. Uh, that justice is joyful and celebratory. 
it's not always the the bad news, the isaiah shouting about the villains sometimes it's the spirit being lavished from on high producing safe places for us all to live and to worship quiet places of rest and flourishing and abundance like a mighty forest that when the spirit is lavished from on high that is when we seek justice and resist evil let us pray god we thank you for your holy spirit at work in us and others we thank you for all those who we have worked with over the years and those who you will give to us to work with in days ahead help us to be open humble trusting that you are always at work in us and for the world and by your grace you will guide us all into the fullness of your justice we lift up these prayers god and all those prayers in our hearts as we say together the prayer that jesus teaches us our mother and father who is in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen we're going to watch a short clip at ccma celebrating 2020 and all the great things that have happened and then we'll proceed into our annual meeting so if you do need to carry on with your day and want to log off or or uh, go your no one will no one will judge you and if you want to stay then we'll have a wonderful and exciting agf